Hello, this is Jem from Elevate Code, and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to make a navigator bar that's tied to an XML document. We're going to be doing this in VB.NET, and I'm making the assumption that you know the basics of VB.NET and are at least somewhat familiar with databases and XML documents. Just to show you what the end result will be, you can see that I've added a navigator bar to this form, and there is some information down below it. If I hit the next button on the navigator bar, you can see the information changes. I can go back and forth between these two sets of information, as these are the only things in the data set. Now what I can also do is add a new entry to my data set by hitting the Add New button. I'm just going to add in some information, and I'll go ahead and add two extra entries just to show you. And when I close the form, it'll save these new entries to an XML document. When I open the form again, you can see it's populated with the entries we just made because the form is pulling this information from our XML document. In a similar fashion, you can also delete any of these entries. Now that you know what we're doing, let's get to the code. In this tutorial, we're going to use Microsoft Visual Basic 2010 Express. We'll start a new project and just name it XML Binding Navigator. All right, let's go ahead and rename our form to Form Binding Navigator. And we'll just also go ahead and change the text property to XML Binding Navigator Example. Next, we'll begin to lay out our form. Let's add a binding navigator object to our project. And for that to work, we're also going to need to add a binding source. You can see both of these items in the gray area at the bottom of the design window. Now we'll also add a label to the form. And then let's go to the properties and change a few things. We'll make the font a bit bigger. Size 12 will probably work. And let's also change the text property to programming language. And we'll just go ahead and center this in the form real quick and move it up just a little bit. Now we're also going to add two more labels. And we can go ahead and just change their text properties to name and producer. Next, we need to add two text boxes. And we'll resize them to make them both the same size. And we'll just go ahead and rename these. That way they match the labels to their left. Now we'll go to the code, just double click on the form. You need to import the system.io Now we're going to make a private function that will create our XML file for us. We'll call it data and we'll be passing the file path as a string later on. We'll make this an X document, which is essentially just an XML file. This will serve as our database. Now we'll set data equal to an XML document by creating an XML header. The languages tag is the table name, and the language tag is for each individual record. The name and producer tags are each fields in that record. I'm going to make another record just so that we have two to work with. 
Now we need to save the XML document to the location that is passed into the function. Now we need to create a flag. Dim boolean once as a boolean and set it to false. We'll also go ahead and declare DS data as a new data set. And we'll declare string folder path as a string. Now go to the form load event sub and if boolean once is false, then call the initialize data sub, which we haven't yet created. Now just to make this clear, the boolean once flag is something that is done because vb.net garbage collector doesn't always destroy the form. So to avoid errors, we use this flag to only initialize this data once. Now we're going to create the initialize data sub. We can just click the error correction options and select generate method stub to do this quickly. Just go ahead and delete the exception. We're not going to worry about error handling for the sake of this tutorial. In this sub, we're going to set the string folder path string that we declared earlier to the user's personal folder. This is the same thing as the My Documents folder in Windows XP and the Documents folder in Windows 7. Now set the string folder path equal to string folder path plus binding navigator example. In the next bit of code, we'll check if the directory exists. If it doesn't, we'll create it. Now we'll check if the database exists. In this case, the database is the XML file. If it doesn't, we're going to create it using our data function that we made earlier in the video. We'll be giving this file the name data.xml. Next, we need to handle what happens if the database does exist, which it should because we just created it in the last statement. Now we want to load the data from the XML file into the data set. We can do this with the dsdata.readxml function and we'll pass the location of the XML into this function. Next, we'll set the tables in our DS data set as a data table collection. Then, we'll create a data view and pass the tables we just created into the data view. We have to use a data view in order for the binding source to work correctly. The data view object will become the data source for the binding source object. Simply to avoid errors, we will check if the data bindings count is at zero for the name text box on our form, but that is the default, so it should be set that way. If it is, then we will add the data from the XML to the data binding by using the data bindings.add sub. We'll set the property name as a string for the first argument, in this case, the text of the text box, then the data source as an object, which is the binding source we added to the form earlier. In this case, this is binding source 1. Since we're handling the data for the name text box, we'll use the name tag as a string. This is coming from the XML document name tag, the XML file that we had set up earlier. We'll set formatting to true, then we want to use the data source to update any time the property is changed. So basically, any time information in the text box is changed, it will update. We're going to do the same thing for the producer text box. Now we'll set the binding source for the binding navigator to the binding source object that we created, named binding source 1. Now we need to go to the form closing event. We'll create a sub for that real quick. We'll have to tell the data set to accept changes or it won't update the file. Then we can use the dsdataset.writeXML sub to ensure that there is a schema on our file. We'll set the arguments to the location of the XML file and tell it to write a schema using XML write mode. And that's it. Now you can run your program and see that it's working.